Well, it's going to be a big speech from the Home Secretary, Suella Bradman, this afternoon. She's in Washington, D.C. She's calling on the UN Refugee Convention, signed back in 1951, to be ripped up and rewritten for modern times. Yes, the Refugee Council charity says the UK should be instead addressing the real issues in the asylum system, such as the record backlog and providing safe routes for those in need of protection, rather than tearing up agreements. Well, the former Australian Foreign Minister, Alexander Downer, joins us now. Um, no stranger to this programme. Alexander, welcome. Very good to talk to you again. What do you make of the Home Secretary speech? She's going to be a lonely voice, I imagine, in calling for this convention to be ripped up or be rewritten because it's not going to happen unless she gets dozens of other countries to go along with it. Well, there has been discussion over the last few years about whether the Refugee Convention can be tightened up, and I think it will true. It would be very difficult to get a consensus for, for that and to make the changes. But the problem that she alludes to is completely right, and that is that since 1951, the definition of a refugee has expanded very substantially. So anyone who comes from a country which is at civil war um, is defined as a refugee. Um, a woman from a country where um, there is systemic discrimination against women for cultural reasons, such as uh, in, in Iran, um, will automatically get refugee status. Or somebody who is gay, who comes from a country uh, where homosexuality is, is illegal, gets refugee status. So if you add um, all of the people who could qualify, I mean, it comes to not much under a billion people in a world of, of what, eight billion people. So. Um, the, the fact is that what was originally intended in 1951 has expanded enormously since. Um, so I think there will be a lot of sympathy um, in the European Union from Australia, the United States, uh, possibly even Canada, um, for what Suella Braverman is saying. But whether it be possible to make those changes, it's, it's hard to see it happening. Alexander, people often say to the Home Secretary and say to the Conservative government when they want to get tough on those crossing the channel, they point to the fact that in previous years, 70 odd percent of those who have sought asylum have been given, granted mm. asylum. Do you think that yeah. might be because the definition of refugee is so broad in Bravman's view? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, the reason why it's so high in the UK, it's over 70 percent of applications are accepted in the UK. In the European Union, at least in the major European Union countries, the figure is much lower, somewhere in the vicinity, I think, of around 40 or 50 percent. Um, so this gets to the whole debate about definition, which is a very good debate to have of what a refugee is. Now, in the case of the UK, um, there is uh, a statutory definition, uh, but there are also the decisions that have been made by the courts. Um, and a sort of a combination of the written law and judgments by, by, by court has led to an ever-expanding definition of, of a refugee. I mean, a refugee is supposed to be someone who is fleeing, an individual who is fleeing, fleeing per personal persecution. Um, and secondly, it is not an application, an application for asylum and is not an application to become a migrant. It's an application for protection. Um, so you don't have to be in the UK for the UK government to provide protection. There are all sorts of different ways countries can provide protection. But it's turned into a very broad definition of what is a refugee and the UK accepting all these people as migrants to come and to live permanently in the UK. So um, the problem has just continued to multiply and it's been gained very successfully by people smugglers. She singled out as well. She said, in her view, it's not good enough just to say, I'm gay, therefore I can be a refugee. And if you think about the, our own Commonwealth, much loved by the late Queen, Alexander, um, at least 20 or 30 countries in the Commonwealth, it's, it is still, you are, you are criminalised if you engage in homosexual acts. So, um, and, and that's been going on to the noses of the British government 
for years and years and we do nothing about it. Uh, so she's got a point, hasn't she, about saying, why should somebody who's gay claim I'm entitled to have refugee status and live in Britain? Well, and of course, it's not just Commonwealth countries. It's countries like uh, Pakistan, Iran yeah. and so on, mm. where being gay is a, a criminal offence. Now, whether um, they actually go ahead and prosecute people in these countries is another question. But nevertheless, um, it has been seen as a basis for um, successfully claiming refugee status. Um, but, I mean, I'm not sure that we need to get into this game, but... How many people live in countries um, where being gay is an offence? Uh, yeah. There yeah. would be many. And then how many of those people are gay? Well, you know, people can do the maths. Um, and you can't have all of these people migrating to the UK. Yeah. Um, so um, there are other ways of addressing these what? issues. And it, I'm going to look, I mean, these are cultural questions too. So... Um, they're very deeply held views in some sorts of societies about these kind of questions. Alexander, can I just ask how many, how big a problem do you think it is um, asylum seekers claiming to be gay when they're not or claiming to be Christian and not and persecuted for religious reasons? Is this a big problem? Because lots of charities and NGOs are saying this is massively overstated and that Braverman shouldn't be picking on the LGBT community, for example. Well, I mean, the LGBTQ plus community is part of the broader community, so um, we're allowed to talk about them. Um, I wouldn't have thought uh, it would be possible to get data on this. I mean, you wouldn't know how many of the claims were sincere and how many of them were false, because by definition, um, those people who have been given refugee status, um, their stories have been accepted. Well, I mean, it's very difficult, isn't it, to, for an immigration officer or border force officer to establish whether someone's mm -hmm. gay or not. Um, yeah, I mean, it used to be quite easy to establish whether they were women, but that seems to be more of a subject of debate as well. <laughs> <laughs> good one. That's a good one. Very Particularly funny. when the um, interviews are being cut from seven hours to 45 minutes. I mean, impossible to tell whether someone's claim no. is genuine or not. That's, um, Alexander. No, I mean, this is a huge issue, a yeah. huge issue. It really is. Alexander, thanks so much for joining us. That's the former Australian Foreign Minister, Alexander Downer. Always good to talk to him. Yes, so listening to that was the Labour MP for Blackley and Broughton, Graham Stringer. Thank you, Graham, for joining us. What's your reaction to what Suella Braverman is going to say? Do you not agree that perhaps the Refugee Convention is, is, is not fit for purpose these days, that maybe the definition of refugee needs to be updated? What well, seems to be forgotten is Suella Braverman's not the first Home Secretary uh, to call for a review of the definition of refugees and a change to the 1951 Convention. Almost as soon as he became Home Secretary in 1997, Jack Straw said that the, uh, the Convention was out of date and needed looking. Art. I mean, there are very few things that last nearly three quarters of a century. You wouldn't buy a car from the early 1950s now. Most of us get into politics because we want to change the law uh, for the better. So I, I, I don't disagree that the Convention uh, needs looking at. It doesn't completely excuse uh, the Conservative government from administering the current system in such a cack-handed uh, way. They've made a mess of it. Uh, they've not put the right resources into dealing with it. So I think there are many levels to this problem. But certainly we should look at the 1951 Convention. With Graham, good to talk to you. Do you agree with the, the thrust of what she's going to say in that speech? That when it was brought in in '51, it was all about um, say, protecting people from persecution. She's now saying that's changed, and it's now about the perception of discrimination. I, if you are a woman, if you are a gay man or woman in certain countries. I think that's true. I mean, I think that's true. The, the definition is changed, as your previous interviewee uh, said. I also think, I, as a constituency MP, I deal with literally thousands of cases of people 
seeking refugee status. And I make my own judgment when I put cases forward about whether or not uh, people deserve to be a refugee uh, or not. And I have to say, my perception, having talked to these people for some time, uh, is often different from the judgments that are made. I have had people come through uh, my surgeries who are people traffickers. I've had people, people in the most desperate plights. And it is often not the people in the most desperate plight uh, who achieve refugee status. Uh, it is sometimes people, I think, with admittedly inadequate information, people who are uh, trying to scam the system, who get refugee status. So there's the administration of it, there's the resources into it, there's definitions. The whole thing looks uh, needs looking at in great detail. Great, and we know that the British public are deeply concerned about migration, illegal migration, and then also high levels of legal migration. What policy do you think is more popular? Because Keir Starmer's been going off to Europe, talking about potential for asylum quotas and quid pro quo deals. Um, and then you've got Suella Bravman talking tough on the international stage. People are being given a choice there, and it does look like the Conservatives at least want to reduce illegal immigration and reduce the burden on our system. At the moment, there is a consultation going out by the government to local authorities asking whether they can take uh, any more um, asylum seekers and pe uh, within their um, boundaries. My guess is, I don't know what the result of that consultation will be, most of the areas where there are currently asylum seekers will say, no, we're full in my constituency. Uh, there is a housing crisis. Uh, there are people who've lived here for a long time who can't find accommodation. There are people uh, who have achieved refugee status, having been asylum seekers, who are living in the most appalling uh, conditions. So quite simply, uh, we don't have the uh, capacity and housing stock in, in many of these areas. So I hope the issue does not become uh, an issue in the general e election because it, my my suspicion and feeling it will turn into a rather nasty affair. But it is uh, absolutely straightforward to say we don't have the capacity at the present uh, time. The law as it stands is out of date and it should be uh, changed. But obviously, where we can, and it probably means needs quotas, we should protect those people uh, who are genuinely at risk, as we have done in Afghanistan uh, and Ukraine. I don't think anybody I've come across objects to taking people from those war-torn countries, but people paying thousands and thousands of pounds to put themselves and sometimes their children at risk crossing the channel. Something needs to be done about that. Graham, if I could ask you just finally, <clears throat> huge speculation about what will or won't happen to HS2, the, whether the government is going to delay or even cancel the London to Manchester line. Your, your constituency is part of Greater Manchester. What's your view? What's your hope? I'm strongly in favour uh, to, there is no doubt this government has let uh, the costs get out of hand. But one of the country's major problems is productivity. Productivity is often related uh, to the infrastructure. If we don't improve our infrastructure, whether it is runways at Heathrow or whether it is HS2, it is difficult to see how we're going to improve our productivity and therefore our wealth. Uh, so I'm in favour of HS2 coming to Manchester and Leeds, and although it was not uh, part of the current plans, I think we should be looking to take HS2 to uh, Glasgow or, or, or Edinburgh as well as linking it up with HS1 in, in Kent. We're a long way behind the rest of Europe and high-speed rail works better uh, the longer it is. We need that infrastructure. All right, that's uh, Graham Stringer, the Labour MP for Blackley and Broughton. Uh, thanks so much, Joyce. Graham, good to talk to you. Uh, maybe I'll see him at the Labour conference in Manchester. Maybe, maybe you will. Local. There's uh, sensible stuff from Graham there no, it, it, and the on Labour the migration. Very sensible. Of course, the Labour conference is in Liverpool the week after. Mm.